Hello, Charmaine. It's a pleasure to have you tonight. Hi, Swan. Hold on. You guys, hold on. Nice to have you. Some of you guys to come out. Hi, Kevin. I'm gonna wait for some of you guys to come out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Loving it. So nice and warm. I need that. How was everybody's week this week? How is everybody doing? <clears throat> everybody's having a good week. I hope. Oh my God, I feel like my face is too white. Um, good. I'm glad everybody had a wonderful week. Tonight we want to talk a little bit about, yeah, hi, Kevin. Thanks for coming out. So thanks for joining in, you guys. I appreciate it. Um, what is new? What is new? What is new? Well, um, February is coming up, and, um, Black History Month is coming up, and I feel there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on around the city for the, uh, for that day. And we're going to start doing a little bit more. Ah, hi, Sharif. How are you, sweetheart? How are you doing? Um, we're going to bring a whole bunch of... Oh, my face is so white. Um, yeah. Hi, Heidi. How you doing, my girl? Heidi, hi. How you doing? Ha, ha, ha. Laughing yogurt. Yoga. Yoga. Not yogurt. Yoga. Yes, you guys, it's, it's, thank, oh, Sharif, you're wonderful, I love those hearts, I love, love hearts, but you guys, I don't know if I have a lot of people, I don't know, I'm just looking, you're laughing, <laughs> Heidi, ha, 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 mm. so, thank you, Sharif, I, I really love those hearts, they're, they're amazing, you keep them going through the whole live and the whole show, and I'm gonna love you, because I love hearts, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you guys, we want to talk today about, hi, Ken, how you doing? We want to talk a little bit, you guys, about the, um, the ep epidemic in Canada. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's bad. And we're losing a lot of our loved ones. We're losing our brothers and our sisters. And we're losing them to fentanyl, you know. And it, it's scary. It really, really is scary because, um, I was also told there's a new kind of fentanyl coming out called, the car fentanyl. Um, it's it's crazy. I I do wonder about a lot of things. I wonder about I wonder about um, the cannabis being legal. I wor I I am worried about the government legalizing that because again, with any kind of drugs or narcotics or whatever, people like to mix them with things. And if certain things is becoming is coming legal for for instance, our youngsters can find fake IDs anywhere, they can find anything anywhere to get, and there's all these stores now that's carrying the cannabis, God knows what's going to be mixed with what, and I'm not saying that every business would do that, but I am saying that there is places and people that would do it. On that note, the fentanyl has become such, uh, such an insane thing that I just kind of wanted to let a lot of people know that the fentanyl has become one of the most dangerous substance um, among us. Ivy says, I've heard it started from pharmacy. 
Yes, it did. And I'm going to elaborate that on a little bit because um, the fentanyl is something that um, the, the, the laboratory does use um, to do anesthetics. When you have in a surgery, um, they mix the fentanyl with another medication. And with that other medication, hi, Linda, how are you doing? Thanks for joining in. With, with the um, fentanyl, they, they add other medication with it, and that is what they use to, when they're going to do surgery. They also do it, it's a painkiller, so it's been subscribed by doctors as a, as a painkiller. And it can start off simply as somebody just in chronic pain at all given time and decides to take um, a small dose of fentanyl, which could be, I don't know, 0 0.05 milliliter or 00, zero whatever. And they continue to take it, but the problem is, it's such a, it's such a, an addictive um, uh, uh, pharmaceutical drug that the, the substance hook people. Um, they become addicted to the painkillers because it's actually for pain. Anyways, where it's becoming, where it's coming from, the sources where it got so much bigger, and I'm saying that we have to be worried about it because we have our children. And the computer, social media and the, and, and the computer and all these things are so open up to our children. It's huge. Mothers are you losing their children on a regular basis. Um, brothers and sisters losing sisters and brothers. Like, it's just an epidemic. Believe it or not, you guys, the fentanyl. You don't even hear about crack cocaine anymore. What you hear about is fentanyl. Um, Kevin says fentanyl was... Involved in the death of MJ Prince and most recently Tom Petty. So yes, well it's true. It's getting very, it's getting out of hand, and I find it's 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 taking our children, it's taking the the younger fellows or the the, the anxiety and the stress. Stress, stress is a big cause of fentanyl. You definitely can. I don't know if you can make it at home, Idy. I'm not sure, um, but I do know that anxiety is a huge part of fentanyl users, and a lot of people don't know that. And we're gonna get into that in in part of um, this this um, this this live because uh, um, 500 million people suffer from anxiety. And most of the doctors do not understand where anxiety comes from. They don't know what suppresses it, and they don't know what causes it. Suan says it's an, I can't see that. It's an opedia um, use of pain, but people tend to abuse it. And we're human, that's Suan, you're right. We all abuse everything we get. A lot of things are good for us, but we take it out of context. But what the problem is now is that it, is it became an epidemic. So right now, as we know it, in Vancouver, in, in Vancouver, um, the, 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 it's coming through Vancouver into Canada, and it's becoming an, an, an insane epidemic. It, 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 it says here, I was reading online, and it says, how Canada got, um, got addicted to fentanyl. It says manufacturers in China cross over. They cross over. So they brought it over here. That's where it's manufactured in there and it's coming over. Because we are not using laughter, yo. <laughs> you're right, Heidi. Heidi, you're so right. But this is a little bit higher than laughing yoga um yoga, you guys. It's pretty it's sad. It's sad. I've known a few I I've, I've known a few young people lately that have actually died from it. And again, a lot of parents and a lot of mothers and a lot of people do not understand the signs of it. They don't understand it. I mean, some mothers are in, you know, they're in whole school and they're working hard. They, they, they're trying to make ends meet. Cost of living has gotten higher. Um, wages has gotten, everything has gotten higher. Food has gotten higher. So it's hard for you to have, be totally so concentrated on your children, especially if you don't know the signs. Now, we have to find a way to protect ourselves. It really, there is no way to protect yourself from fentanyl, fentanyl. Um, the, the dealers, the, the, the manufacturers. There's really no way. Because, again, today, I, I noticed you guys, the children can actually 
go online and order it online and it comes in a package it takes three to four days for them to pick it up now a per that child could use any kind of id he could change that child could be 15 that child could be 16 and change your age and get this substance online the package gets delivered to their home now a lot of mothers are at work and are not aware of it not know what's going on so i'm saying it's worse than an epidemic. We have somebody manufacturing put in over here. It's not even like something that we can control. But yet, a lot of people are giving the dope dealers, um, are selling the, the pills or the powder or whatever form it comes in. A lot of people are taking it up for the dope dealers. But we can't blame the dope dealer 30. We have to educate ourselves on this drug because it's an illegal drug. It's absolutely insane. It has no mercy, no prejudice. But what I'm saying is, if the pharmaceutical is making this drug, if they are actually making this drug, and they can monitor what is given and what is not given, then the problem starts inside the pharmaceutical. And they say pharmaceutical is one of the biggest business, one of the hugest business here on the planet. So we can sit here and be upset with the drug dealers and be upset with this one, Tom and Dick and Ari, but really, we got to be upset with the pharmaceutical because they're the one that made that drug for it to take care of pain. So if it became such, if it's such a bad epidemic in Canada or wherever else in the world, I feel that we need to find a different substance. I feel that a, doc, a, a pharmacist or a doctor has to prescribe a different kind of drugs. You could say that too, ID. Absolutely. I just feel like I. See I feel like everybody has to get together. The 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 the, the police, the the crisis team, the health team, the 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 pharmaceutical, the government. Everybody has to get together to fight this issue because it has gotten way out of hand. And maybe some of us might not take it take it as seriously as we should until it affects one of our one of our people once it affects one of our people that's when we are going to see it and i don't want to wait for it to affect one of my people and i know you guys don't either so i don't know if there's got to be a petition i don't know what there has to do i don't know if the government has to get involved um i don't know if the, they have to get to the pharmaceutical i don't know if they have to get to the they just have to you have we have they have to figure out something because it's pretty bad you know what i mean i want to hit on um, anxiety. Anxiety is something that 5 million people get. And because 5 million people get anxiety, a lot of them do not know what is going on. They do not understand it. Most of us think when we get anxiety, we're either going crazy, we're losing our mind, or we just don't know, we don't understand. But it's a part of our mind that's taken over where our stress can't control it and because of that we use different different kind of drugs the pharmaceuticals again gives us different different kind of drugs to monitor to calm us down and keep us at that level where we're like a zombie but that's not what happens what happens is we end up getting addicted and end up needing stronger and stronger and stronger medication and as we enter into stronger and stronger medication i feel the fentanyl somehow gets in there some people want to numb themselves so that they can't feel the pain but i mean in life in everything we do we're going to feel pain there's no need to numb nothing i think we need to just take a step back breathe and realize that we're going to have stress there is no life without stress there is no life at all you have to have stress with every success that we have in life we're going to lose something it's impossible just to continue to gain all the time so we have to get ourselves into that place to know that there is stress and there will always be stress it's again we have to figure out a way to monitor the stress so we can lessen the drugs because the drug is creating, a, we're becoming real dependable on those kind of narcotics, which is creating such a huge, huge epidemic 
a fentanyl into the community with the children, with the adults, with everybody that's running away from the pressure of life. You know, L numb me. I need something to numb me. I need something to make me forget. I need something for me. But that's not human. That's not normal. We're not supposed to walk around numb. We're supposed to feel these things because we are human. As simple as that. For every success in our life, we're going to end up with some failures. And I tell you, if we didn't end up with failures, I don't think a lot of us would know what success was. If we did not lose something and open the door to let something else in, we would never reach to that platform. So again, we can't base all this this, 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 this chemical and this drug and all the stuff that's going on. The government has to take a step up because again, with the cannabis being, le being legal, I'm a little, I'm a little confused about. I'm a little bit confused about it because, and I don't want to, I don't want to throw stones. But what I feel is, I feel when it's beneficial to the government to tap to tap into a market where they can enhance some of the finance. I feel that then it's okay to change the law. And I don't understand it because for the longest time that I've known from I was a child growing up, I, I, I was told by the Canadian government, because I didn't grow up any, anywhere else, that ganja, cannabis, weed, bunk, drugs, whatever, you get, whatever name that you know it as is illegal. So all of a sudden, and, and, and again, when we clap it off and we look into America, there's, I would swear there's about 70% of black males in prison because they either had some bong on them, they either had some weed on them, they found, got caught with some weed in their pocket, they caught smoking some weed, they got caught with something. So we have that much of them in prison, and all of a sudden, 2018, now it's okay to smoke to sell weed, um, to have shops with cannabis, to, I, I don't understand, I don't understand the law, I don't understand the government to that full, ex, to that ex, full extent, because I don't understand how you can switch the law so quickly. You know, I, I, I again, I, I'm not in the government, and I don't understand it, I'm just saying, that is not going to make fentanyl any better. I don't think it's a good idea to to have all that stuff going around when there's an epidemic on fentanyl. Let me read what Nick, uh, Nikki, Nick says. Nikki? It starts from the doctors because the truth is it works for people with chronic pain, but some of the doctors are over prescribing those medications. For their patient those drugs are not to be on I can't see the rest um, sorry I'm, I'm trying to read on um, Nikki's um, medic uh, medication Nikki's um, uh, those drugs are not to be on a repeat prescription and next is the pharmacists who are selling under counter to make a bag of money they need to go after them that's where it starts. That's my two cents. So sad. Um, thank you, Nikki, for that. It, it seems like right now we are living. We are living in a place of in a world of corruption. We're living in a time of corruption, and unfortunately, we're hurting ourselves. We're hurting the 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 the, the, the things that are going on, whether it's with doctors, pharmacists. It's hurting us. It's hurting human. It's hurting us, and it's hurting our children and our family. And we need to really, we need to address it, and we need to inform ourselves, and we need to get the information out there. Um, and we also need to to write. We need to write our thoughts. We need to 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 say our thoughts. We need to talk about these things. Um, apparently, they uh, apparently we are. Um, thank you, thank you, Nikki. Um, what I'm understanding is, and I didn't realize how bad fentanyl was. Uh, the other day they had a candlelight for all the, the all the death, all the people, all the children, all the youngsters that died um, with the fentanyl, and it was amazing. It was amazing. 
if you guys realize, or if people don't know much about it, if they realize the amount of people that's been affected by this fentanyl drug, you know, you guys would do some serious research on it because it's getting out of hand. Um, Nikki said she's worked at a pharmacist. She worked at a pharmacist and with a doctor for years, and she knows how crazy it is. And then that's where Nikki, you need to get involved with communities. And maybe if it's all if if it's over, if it's too much, maybe you need to report them. I feel like I don't know if there's a real control over it because they're allowed to sell a, some sort of a dosage. They are. They're allowed to sell a, 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 a sort of a dosage of it, but who knows how much of it they're selling, and who knows, like you said, how regular, how much, how often they're writing the prescription. I want to know though: is there another? Is can it? I feel like the government should take it off the market, and it only should be used when they're actually doing anesthetics. I feel like fentanyl should be illegal. It should not be anywhere. If it's take if it's such an epidemic and it's so uncontrollable, it should be taken off the market, period. And it should only be in the hands of doctors. And if the doctors are not doing what they're supposed to do with it, then the doctor should be fined, imprisonment, or charged. I feel like the government has to step in and take control of how that medicine is prescribed and how it's been sent out. Because I don't feel there is any other way possible to, to stop that epidemic. Um, for instance, it's too late. Well, I, I don't think it's ever too late. It's never too late for anything. Um, a lot of us say it's too late until it affects us. I don't think it's too late for anything. If we're talking about, from the minute we're talking about something, we've put it out there to the universe. And from we're trying to seek some kind of help, what I just did, what I'm doing right this minute, ID honey, is I am implanting seeds in people's minds. And I'm getting people to be more aware of what's going on with the fentanyl. So as long as we, we, we're aware and we're letting people know what's going on, and we are growing seeds. Whether it's just people that are looking on the live or people that's going to share the live or people that have lost an individual through the light, the live, I don't think it's too late. Whether it's somebody that's seen this live with the fentanyl, they probably have lost somebody and they probably, the pain for them is probably unbelievable because maybe they felt that it could have, it, it, it could have changed. If everybody had gotten involved and tried to help some way, some form, some shape, maybe they wouldn't have lost one of their relative, one of their... It makes too much money. Well, you know, I, I agree with, I, you know, I agree, I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree that it makes too much money and whatever not. But I never ever say, I, I never say it's too late for anything. I've seen the strangest of things have happened. Just like, just like weed becoming legal in Canada. I, if somebody had told me that would have ever happened, I would have said that was too late too. I mean, are you kidding me? So we can never say too late, but I'm saying we need to sow the seeds. We need to bring awareness to the people that don't know. There's, um, there's families that come here from different countries, and their children are involved in it. You know what? I've learned the difference between pra I, I, I learned the difference between prayer. You said, but I agree. I pray it stops. I believe the difference between praying for something and working towards something is two different things. Because yes, God wants you to worship and He wants you to ask, but He also wants you to get up and try to change things. So sometimes it depends on how we pray. If we can make a difference by helping, we can do that and pray at the same time, right? But I don't, I don't ever, I don't, I don't want to really give up on something that is so dangerous and so 
it's it's such an effect in the world today like it's just a huge effect in the world and it's a huge effect on families and families that we haven't seen and families that we don't know and families that just gone through something the other day I mean they're closing their eyes every day wishing they knew or they understood or you know something but they don't know so if we can kind of let them know like it's there it's very very dangerous and you know we have to if somebody went there for instance to the doctor to get some medication because they're in chronic pain and I'm not saying that everybody has internet and Facebook and whatever not but what I'm trying to say is maybe that individual doesn't know the effect of the drug to that extent so they go and they get it and they take it one time not knowing this fentanyl thing is out here mashing down people left right and center so they get on it and it starts to help it starts to help the pain because none of us want to be in pain I hate when I'm in pain it makes it's discomfort it makes me upset it makes me angry so nobody wants to be in, in, uh, in pain so you take the pill or you take whatever it's, it comes in and it eases you but then the pain comes back and sometimes it come back harder so you ask for a, a large amount and then the large amount eases you but after a while you start to get more than you expect and again you said it makes too much money and it, the doctors are get, not getting away with it the, the pharmacists are getting away with it so if somebody doesn't know that to that extent that this thing is so crazy and it's so potent and they continue to do it they could end up in a situation like a lot of other people not aware of how this drug or how it's difficult or how wicked this drug is you understand because if everybody is out for the almighty god dollars nobody's going to inform anybody of how bad this is I mean, I've heard about fentanyl, and I never thought anything of it. But when I saw somebody else died from it and hurt from it, now I'm thinking about it. It's dangerous. It could have been my son. It could have been my daughter. They could have been in pain. They could have gotten into an accident and took this medication. And there you go. So, yes, we have to try to help by talking about it, by educating, by as much as we can do to help. And again, like I said, a lot of people didn't, I did not know that you can go online and order fentanyl and it comes to you in a couple of days. Three to four days, it says. It's easy at, uh, it, it's easy to, it, it says here, it is just as ordering a book online. Sign up for, sign up to an account and choose a payment type. You see what I'm saying? So the problem is, everywhere we look or turn, this thing seems to be sneaking in corners and cranny and crannies. So, again, nobody has to go out to find a dealer. They just have to sign up online and get it. That's insane. Um, Nikki says, I think they are making it with other substance, too. Absolutely, Nikki, and that is what's killing people. They're putting some stuff in it. The car fentanyl, the car fentanyl is the worst. Because the car fentanyl now has been mixed with all kind of stuff. And that thing is not waiting for you to breathe. It's telling you, take me and I'm taking you out. The car fentanyl. If you guys haven't heard of it, research it and check and check it and read out about it. Because it's, it's worse than fentanyl. It's the, new, it's the new thing. And it's manufactured. And now it's been made by, these guys have been making it up and changing the, the, the chemical aspect of it. Um, she said, never too late, it can be controlled. Everything can be controlled, and nothing is ever too late until you're dead. When, we're, when the species of human beings are dead and gone, then is when we say everything is late. Um, there will be whatever is out there, it must finish. There will be no source to get it, so the best thing now is... I have to hit that thing. Hold on. I just see it. Uh, there we go. Um, now banned it on the international level. Exactly. That's the start. I start to ban it on the international level. And again, I think even banning it on the international level, maybe these people will come up with it as uh, some something else. Kinky hair. 100% um, human hair. Who knows? People are crazy. We're, we're crazy nowadays. Um, somebody, hi Tiffany, thanks for joining in. What about the Tide Pod? 
the Tide Pod. What about the Tide Pod? Can you tell me, tell, explain that to me? What about the Tide Pod ID? Um, you can um, write to me and explain to me what, what the Tide Pod. Um, I'm not familiar with drugs. Like I said, the biggest drug I knew of was cocaine. And I barely hear anything about cocaine anymore. You know, what a hell of a drug it used to be. And now we don't have a hell of a drug. We have fentanyl. Like, stop my breath. So we really have to try to find a way to help out, um, get more involved in the community, get more involved with parents and family. They are taking it, a killing themselves. I feel, I feel like they're, you know what, I, it's just funny. And this is what, this is what I, it's for dishwasher. Okay, I heard about that. Um, my, it's, it's actually very, very scary. It is so scary. It actually depresses, it stresses me out as you mention it. Um, my daughter came home from school and that's not what she called it. She said, mom, mom, do you know the kids are talking about the biggest, the biggest thing right now is kids are, 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 are eating the dishwashing liquid thing. I'm um, the, the, the dishwasher and soap thing. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah, they, the kids are talking about it. So we're in a time and a place. Hi, David. How you doing? Um, we're in a time and a place where pod, pod, pod. We're in a time and a place where Mm, we don't value lives anymore, and and that's what I'm worried about. We just we don't seem to have the value, and it drains me. It it drains me because we don't respect human lives anymore. We don't respect our own lives, and we don't respect human lives. And it it just it drains me. If you notice when you talk about the children and that pad, I just have to lay my head down because I just have to lay my head down because I'm just I'm 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 lifeless because I don't know. I don't know why a child would do the things that they do and I don't know why I don't know why it's so hard for children to be children anymore. I don't I don't know why it's so hard for kids to be kids and and enjoy growing. Enjoy being a child, enjoy being I feel like, I feel like parents, I feel like we need to spend more time educating. I feel like we need more time to talk to the kids about drugs, sex, just more time about everything. Maybe we need to reassure the kids that being young is a gift. You know, being old is not the gift. Being young is the gift. I mean, when you get old is when you start feeling the pains and the stress and the anxiety. Like, I think we need to talk to them more, spend more time. I don't know. It's, you know, because, again, I know something is going on in the world. And I know something is going on in the economy. I know something, I know something, something is going on that's not too good. It's not. Because... I had an interview on Thursday with Rachel Notley, and most of you guys know that that's the premier of Alberta. And we, there's a question that came up. I said to, I asked her, why did you feel the need to raise minimum wage in an unstable economy? That's that's the question that I asked. That's one of the questions that I remember. And her, her answer was, do you know how hard it is for a, a mother, a single mother, or a single father, or even a husband and a wife that are working a job seven days a week, and at the end of the seven days, they still have to go to the food bank 
to try to get some food. But yet, the million dollar corporation continues to become billion dollar corporation while these people work to death. She goes, Althea, do you think there would be a good time to help people? I, I find it strange that everybody, I find it strange that all the corporation are getting angry over the minimum wage. Um, Tim Horton in Toronto don't want to give no vacation pay. They're not paying for time off. They're not paying for a break. They're not paying for nothing. They totally got pissed off. But she's saying, it doesn't matter. You can't have people working to death and not giving them nothing. So, yes, yeah, something is going on. It's all about the almighty dollar. Um, Tr Nikki has a, a comment here. What did Nikki say? Nikki says, I think we need to have a session in school now. Um, groom certain age of discussion, all these stuff. It's, and it's important. And I want to tell everybody out there, good night, Carrie. Um, uh, Nikki, I think that it's such a fantastic idea. And the way that we can discuss these ideas is by you guys can send these things into your council. You guys can send these things into your MLA. They're there. The counselors are in your area. If most people don't know what the don't know what a counselor is supposed to do in your area. Hi Ben, how are you? I miss you. If most people don't know what you're supposed to do, or what a counselor does in your area, because honestly, I didn't know what a counselor did in my area either. I didn't know what they were there for. So not that I'm trying to show out and, and, and think I know everything, but I'm saying I didn't know either. Well, you know what? Do they really listen to you, Carrie Ann? What you need to do is, it doesn't matter if they really listen or they don't listen. You need, you guys, everybody needs to get together into that, in their area, and you guys need to petition it. That's just how it goes. You cannot get nothing done if you guys don't get together and petition it. Get together and say this, I live in this community, and I'm worried about the drugs, and I believe that this should be implemented. And I mean, if one person is not going to make a change, but one person will bring other people together and get a group together to make that change. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yes, it is your council. And if your council doesn't listen to you, you have City Hall downtown. Go downtown into the City Hall and sit in the chamber and put your hands up. And if they don't want to listen to you, shout it out and tell them what you want. You are a citizen. You're a taxpaying person. So you deserve to be heard, listen, and work with. That's what your counselor is for. But because a lot of us become complacent in ourselves and we don't make a move to make a change. Again, most of the counselors and the, and the MLAs and the government, nobody wants to be shown up. Nobody wants to be seen as the bad guy. So if you get enough people together to say, I would like to implement certain things in the school, because things, let's get it correctly, things are not like they used to be. You understand? It's not like when me and you used to grow. These are times of change and things of change. And yes, you're right. We are living in a scary world. So we have to take the extra step to protect ourselves and our children. And it's not just one place. It's a worldwide, worldwide thing. So yes, your counselor is here to help. And if you put it in once and they don't react, you put it in twice, they don't react, hit yourself to the city hall and take a group of you. Take a group. And you know what, you guys? There's got to be a leader in your community and get your leader in the community to work with you. You know what I mean? Every time somebody's doing something and they're getting involved and they're becoming something in the community, they're putting themselves in that position for you guys to use them. I'm putting myself in the position for you guys to use me. You know, I want to be able to go with the peers and I want to be able to go and make a change. I want to be able to make an appointment and I can have 20, 30 people come behind me and says, look, we need this information in our school for our children. So we do need to, it's, it's a work together thing. Um, Nick, uh, Nikki says, okay, I'll see about that. Yeah, please check and do not not check. I mean, there is a, uh, there's a government news that comes out on a daily basis, and it tells you what the government is saying and doing, 
And I believe that if you um, research online, you can get that number or that uh, that site, and you can read and see. It just there's everything is on computer now. You everything. You don't. We don't do nothing for ourselves anymore. We we don't even hold each other hand. We talk from a distance. I sit on a camera and tell you how much I love you. I don't come in front of your face and tell you how I love you. We're becoming very impersonal, and that is another thing that's not good. We cannot be human and be this impersonal. We have to be able to touch and feel. That is how we were made. We were made to love, touch, and feel. And once we lose those substance and we become like robots and computer, believe you me, these things that are happening to our children and happening to school and outside and all over the place will not matter to any of us because we've lost being a human. We just became a robot. We're here and we react. If I want to tell you that I love you, I don't pick up the phone anymore to hear your voice and say, I love you. I get my phone and I start text. Hi, babe, I love you. Hi, babe, I miss you. Hi, babe, come on over. Hey, can I order some food? Oh, um, can I get this? Can you deliver this? Can I order my clothes online? Do you guys kind of see where I'm going with this? There's no more human connection going on between us. It's a matter of time before we don't even have businesses where you can walk into a store and see somebody. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be a time when we don't have that. We're losing humanity. We're, we're, we're evolving into other things, and that's not what helps us. If you go to church or you read your Bible or you go to church, the reverend will tell you, you have to be together. We have to be together, and we have to to have that physical connection. We can't be human and have no physical connection. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining in. Again, you guys, the fentanyl is becoming a very, very out-of-control thing. And, and, and when it comes that the, that the doctors can't be controlled, because, you know, not every doctor are bad, but you have good and bad in everything. And some people don't care who they hurt to get the money. And that's just what it really boils down to. So, yes, we have to educate our children. I'm worried about the, the hi, Jessica, how are you, honey? I hope you're loving your hair. Um, I'm a little, I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried about the, the anxiety that we are all feeling. I'm, I'm worried about the anxiety. The anxiety between humans. I mean, to have 5 million people that carry anxiety, got to tell you something. It's got to tell you something is definitely wrong. But they're, they're, they're not telling you, oh, I'm glad you love your hair, sweetie. Um, they're not telling you what, majority of the doctors until this day cannot tell you, they're saying it's your suratona, suratoma. But until this day, a lot of doctors cannot tell you why people get anxiety. They don't know. So what they do is they suppress it by giving you all kind of drugs to ease it. I don't think that's what you need. I think anxiety, you could, you could go on to a breathe mechanism. You can learn to breathe. I think you can learn to walk. I think you can learn to read. It's all how, it, it, what, it, it, every person uses a different mechanism to, to, to wind down and calm down. Some people, they pick up a book and a good story and a good book, and that winds them down. Other people just sit and meditate with long, deep breath, and it pulls them out of it. And if you understand, it's not a, it's not a disease or the end of the world. It's because five million people get it. So it's obviously something that comes with life. Life happens, and life gets crazy. Yes, miss, we need to get in the school from a certain age. Sex, drugs, and different types of abuse, etc. Nikki, we're absolutely right, but we can talk and talk and talk. And if we don't get up and take action and either go to the school board, write letters, go to our counselor, if we don't get up and do these things, these things don't change. Again, I'm just here to bring awareness to these issues and these things. I find that a lot of people aren't talking about it. And if it doesn't affect them, they don't, they don't address it. 
Do not wait for something to affect you to address it. You need to address it on a regular basis, especially if it's something um, positive that you can change into something. If something negative, you could change to something positive. We need to address the issue at all given time. Um, uh, Nikki says, yes, we need to join together to save our children. I think we need to save ourselves uh, as well. I think we are very, I think humans are in a place of so, such an unhappy and unhappy and, an, and not a contented place. We're not contented when we're not happy. And some of us are living, but we're dead. We're just walking around with no, no, no spunk, no energy. We're here, but we're not here. And I just, I, I feel like we need to, I, I say it all the time. I think I say it every time I get on here. I think we just have to take a step backward and get back to basic, you know, and, and realize the simple things out of life. Because what we did was we just complicated it. We complicate, we complicate it with money, finance, and all the other stuff that matters. Because think about it. Think about this today. If today was the last day for us to live, everybody out there, think about it. Today is today, 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 today is my last day, right? And it's time for me to go home to God. Okay. And I, they asked me, what did you regret to do? What did you, what could, what would you do? What could you, you, you only have a certain amount of time. And what would you do? Honestly, that's a question for everybody to think. What would you do? Make the best of it. Don't be put in that position to wait until your, your moment to live. Live now. We just have to help. Help one another. That's all we can do. We just got to try to help one another. And I think it would just lower the stress. But again, hi, Jeffrey. Again, I really think it's very important. It's very important for everybody to start educate, educating the children about sex, drugs, um, fentanyl. They need to hear that name, know that name. They need to know what it's consist of, what happens, what happens. So if they see a friend, another kid, another kid, another kid, another kid, another kid. I mean, as young as grade 7, the things that my daughter come home and tell me, it's amazing. So believe it or not, it's, it's starting as young as grade 5, 6, 7, and, all, and up. So we just have to be careful and check and make sure our children are okay. They are our future. And if they're not okay, I don't know, we don't have anything left. Um, please, you guys, research. Um, research the fentanyl. Um, get educated on it. Try to reach out to children, family members that are that lost their kids because they really need the support. Support is most important, again, for everybody that's in a crisis. The support is what is important. Um, we all need to support each other on a regular basis. We cannot, we cannot live without it. If we're not, if we're not connecting and supporting and showing love and everything else, we are not living. You know, at the end of the day, if you're not loving someone, you're not doing anything. If you're not helping anyone, you're not doing anything. And if you're not making a difference in the life that God has given you on this planet, and live as a brilliant person. You really aren't doing anything. You've got to make changes and good changes that affect life and change life in a fantastic and a positive way. Um, Sunday Tea with Althea, I come out every Sunday. I try to bring awareness on topics and changes and different things at all times. And if you guys need a substance, if you guys need something to talk about, if you guys aren't sure of something, please ask me. I will research. I will talk to who I can. I would leap out to help. If there's any person out there that's going through any kind of changes and you need some kind of help, it is not hard for you to inbox me. Some people do not like to talk their, their, their stuff on live. Not everybody wants to um, initiate their whole entire life over Facebook. But for the people that really do need help, and I can help, 
please reach out, whether it's through messenger, whether it's through email, whatever it is. I honestly, truly, I love helping. I love changing people's lives in a positive way. And when somebody says that I've embraced them and I've uplifted them and I've changed something about their life, I know that I've done something positive. And it's not about the money and it's not about being paid because I'm not I wasn't paid for it. It was just a feeling that I get of um of a special feeling, a contentness. A feeling to know that I'm 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 helpful. I can help somebody. And I know that I won't help 20, 30 people on here, but I do know that one person will be affected by what I say in a positive way. And that one person will affect somebody else in a positive way. And it go, the chain goes on. So it's not that we have 150 people watching us or viewing us. It's about the change that we, the positive change that we can make in a person's life at every episode that I do really enlightens me and makes my heart happy. So it's Sunday Tea, and I thank you guys for coming out every Sunday. I hope that I help somebody enhance somebody's life, change somebody's life. I hope I give somebody some information that they can use to help to go on forward. Whatever you need, you guys can do it again. Um, Calgary, laughter, yoga, Heidi, ha, 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 ha. I need to come and have a session with you. It's been a while since I had... Hi, Hoenn, how are you doing? It's been a while, Heidi, since I had a little bit of a laugh. So I need one. You guys, again, um, I'm going to close out by just coming out with something positive. Um, so every time I come off, you guys can have something positive. So, you know, every time we get New Year's, we all make New Year's resolutions. And sometimes we keep them and sometimes we don't. Well, my New Year's resolution was, I've been through a really rough, well, not rough, I had, you know, it, it, 2017 was kind of a great year, actually. It was the start of everything, and it was my learning process, as I'm, as I'm still learning. And um, it's amazing, because I started, I, I made my New Year's resolution as, I'm going to sow positive seeds. I don't know if a lot of people know what that means to means when I say positive seeds, but in my life, I've I've always I've always carried a fear. Hi, Lisa. Um, I always carry a fear, and the fear is what we implant in our in 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 here, right? So when we when we when we have fear, fear turns to anger, fear turns to hate, fear turns to scare. Fear turns to um, resentment. Fear turns to a lot of things. So for me, the fear was my biggest, my biggest obstacle was fear. Um, hi, Lisa. I hope everything is, I hope you're doing fantastic tonight. Thanks for joining in. Um, fear is, was my biggest obstacle. So what I did was I decided, you know what, I'm going to read a chapter every single day one chapter of an empowerment book, something that empowers my mind every day. I've also decided that I was going to try to read a book a week. Believe it or not, I made this in New Year's, and as, as since I made I made made this um, New Year's resolution, I've done one book already. Um, I've done the second book. I'm on my third book. And I listen to T.D. Jake every single morning. I listen to somebody that is empowered in their mind. Somebody that is amazing. And I tell myself that I'm amazing. And I tell myself that I too is going to be triple amazing. And I tell you guys. When you start to feed the mind with good stuff and, and take out all those negative things, take out all those bad things, and how do you take them out of your mind? You do not listen to negative things. And if you do hear negative things, you've got to, have, you've got to put on a block. And when you put on that block, you put nice things in it. And after a while... 
none of those negative thoughts can catch you because you have now learned the pattern to remove negative information because negative information is what clouds the judgment of your mind so for my new year's resolution i've started sowing positive seeds in here yeah because again if you continue to listen to toxic and ignorant behavior and ignorant ways you will not uplift and elevate you will not elevate you will not move from where you are another thing is a lot of us want to reach to the sky but when other people are trying to grow we are not trying to help them to grow you we I cannot expect to grow by myself and nobody else we have to help each other climb it just that's just the universe you guys put good thoughts out to the universe because every thought become an idea every thought becomes a pattern every thought become a business every thought become love every thought become a child every thought that you have manifests into some sort of a source or energy and become something so make sure the thoughts that you're putting out in the universe is thoughts of good kindness and genuine thoughts so you're filling your mind with nothing but healthy and positive thoughts you guys, that's all I have for you tonight. May God bless every last one of you for staying out here and listening to me. And have a fantastic Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. Wake up with nothing but good thoughts. And another tiny little bit of thing I'm going to give you guys out there. We know that every time we wake up for Monday, we get kind of stressed out at the start of the week. And we we're worried. Don't do that. Just the way you enjoy the end of the week. How about if you, you do the same thing that you do for the end of the week, you start doing it for the, the start of the week and see what happens. So what we're going to leave tonight, we're going to say, Rahoo! it's Monday, it's going to be fabulous, we're going to go to work, we're going to get a raise, all kinds of things are going to happen on Monday. And we're going to change the pattern instead of saying, oh God, it's Monday. We're going to say, it's Monday and it's amazing Monday. You guys rock. Hi, Nicole. How you doing out there? You guys rock. I love you guys. And I love those hearts. And Heidi, you want me to do a little bit of ho, 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 I'm sorry. Laughing yoga helps you train your breathing. Um, Heidi, you can put it under there where they can find you. Because I definitely don't mind advertise anybody and everybody who needs the help to grow to go where they're going. So, Heidi, if it's laughing yoga you do, please put it in the live. Um, Lisa Bell, I think you sell houses. Please put it in the live and tell people where they can find you to sell a house. Nicole, how you doing? Nicole has a foundation. Nicole, put the foundation in the live and tell people what they can do to help. We have so many people out here. You can tell everybody can put their stuff in here and help. Um, Nikki, Nikki wants to go out and try to implement some stuff with the school. You guys are on the live. Join together, work together, and help Nikki to get this out with the counselor in your ward. And you can find the information online. Now, I'm going to ask you guys another favor before I tune off. Because I just said I was leaving, right? What a woman love chat. Me love chat. Chat, chat, chat. But anyway... Before we leave, you guys, Island T with all the on Omni Television. The thing is turning up big. I'm going to tell you guys, it is becoming Silent Angel. There you go. The thing is becoming amazing. In Toronto, I have 40% of the viewing. It's huge. Big. I really didn't think I would have gone that far, but I give God thanks. I thank God. And I thank the people that helped me to be there because there's no way that I, I did it by myself. There's no way. It's me coming on here, talking to you guys, reacting with you guys, you guys reacting with me, you guys saying good things, bad things, whatever the things is. It helps me to develop and make myself into a better person. So, yes, without you guys, it would have never been possible. So I want to say thank you very, very, very much for your continual support. Even the people that are against me, thank you very much for being against me because what it does, it, it allows me to continue and fight harder because I'm stubborn. When somebody tells me I can't, I work even double harder. So thank you guys again. 
for you not appreciating me because it just makes me work harder. And for the ones that appreciate me, may God bless you, even with the other ones. I want everybody to be blessed and thankful, but I want everybody to watch what I'm doing and see what I'm doing and change your mind pattern, change your ways because there's no need. Life is too short. I have a plan, and my plan is the day that I close my eyes to die, I don't want to regret anything that I've ever done on this planet. I will close my eyes and kiss my children and my husband and our whoever it is at the time when I'm saying bye, and I will not have no regret because I would have loved unconditional. I would have lived unconditional, and I would have helped unconditional. And then there was no reason for me to feel any kind of resentment to go where I'm going. So what I'm doing, I'm fulfilling my life and my purpose. And I swear to you guys out there, I feel brilliant. I feel amazing. And I just want to let you guys know what, what prayer, a little bit of prayer and faith will do. And it will move mountains. And I feel amazing and the things that are happening in my life because the way that I feel and and the things that I'm touching and reacting to I don't know if you guys can't see it but I'm telling you open up your mind to good things good things come they do if you open up your mind to good things good thoughts plant good seeds and I tell myself that every single day. That is now my new word. That is now, you will hear it every time I come on this live. Plant good seeds, positive seeds, because it makes a whole difference on your life. You guys rock. Thank you very much. The show is in Ontario, Omni One. It's in Calgary. Um, Alberta, all of Alberta, all of Ontario. You guys, it got to the point where I got the chance to shoot at City TV last week. The thing is turning up. It's amazing. I feel fantastic. And 2018 is going to be my year. And the reason why it's going to be my year, it's not that I'm any more greater than any of you guys out there. It's just that I've changed my mindset. Listen to what I'm saying and implement that change and see what happens in your life. God bless you. Have a great night, guys. Bye.